We got some updates regarding the RTX 50 series of graphics cards. We got some news regarding emulation and Nintendo taking down some emulators on Android. News regarding the PS5 Pro, which I find pretty cool. The Intel i9-14900KS completely blowing my mind. And then the Asus Rogue Alley being on sale already, which is making the MSI handheld that we just barely got pretty pointless to actually get. But first, let's cover the article that I'm sure you all ended up clicking this video for. And that, my friends, is the NVIDIA RTX 5090 specs being a boost, but NVIDIA leaving the other graphics cards behind. So if we go down to this article, the portion that we need to read, I ended up highlighting. However, those of you that are not following any of the people over on Twitter that are notorious for leaking stuff, here is the image where all this information is coming from. So, in no uncertain terms, Copilot 7 Kimi claims that GB203 and GB205 GPUs will respectively arrive equipped with a 256-bit and a 192-bit memory bus. For context, this mirrors the AD103 and AD104 GPUs used to the RTX 4080 and the RTX 4070, presumably leaving GB206 with a 128-bit bus like AD106. This is disappointing turn of events, particularly given how budget graphics cards like the RTX 4060 have been rightly criticized for low memory bandwidth and VRAM capacities. Don't forget, the RTX 3060 12GB outclasses its Lovelace successor in both of these respects. However, GDDR7 does provide a glimmer of hope that Blackwell GPUs will be decidedly improved over the current generation in place of an 8GB of VRAM on a 128-bit bus. We could see 12GB thanks to the new memory spec in addition to faster memory clocks bolstering bland width further. So I don't really know man, it, it's kind of hard to tell what's going to end up happening here because Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I hate saying it just as much as you probably hate me saying it, but if I do not say it, like 1% of you will actually do it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. I know that they just barely mentioned the RTX 4060 in this article, but for those of you that have not actually gotten a 4060 and used it, the problem with this man is that you look at the specs that come with an RTX 4060 and you think that it's going to perform like dog rear end but it doesn't it actually performs fairly well an rtx 4060 is more than capable of 1440p gaming on low to medium settings and then the rtx 4060 ti is bumping that up to like the higher settings at 1440p so yes i'm fully aware you're probably going to need to use dlss 3.5 in order to accomplish the higher frame rates at that resolution but it's like just because the graphics card has eight gigabytes of VRAM doesn't really ruin the experience. I know, am I saying that it would be nice to have 12? It absolutely would. But I'm just saying that there's not, you know, there's not really, I don't know how to put it, man. It just, I don't know like what Nvidia ended up doing with the actual graphics card, but it's like the specs that you see on a 4060 they just don't really make sense because the graphics card performs pretty good for what it is, you know? So this right here, this is just an update regarding the RTX 4090 versus the RTX 5090. However, this article is very, very long, but the part that we need to cover is really just this little chart here. To be honest, I'm not going to be able to understand any of the text in this article anyways. I'm terrible at reading. So this right here, we have the specs for streaming multiprocessor, CUDA cores, ray tracing cores, tensor cores, boost clock, L2 cache, and then the memory bandwidth. So for the RTX 4090, we have 128. And then for the 5090, we have 192. For CUDA cores, we got about 16,000 on the 4090. And then we have about 24 and a half for the RTX 5090. For ray tracing cores, we have 128 on the 4090 and then 192 on the 5090. For tensor cores, we have 512 on the 4090, 768 on the 5090. Boost clock is 2.5 for the 4090 and then 2.9 for the 5090. For L2 cache, we have 72 on the 4090 and then 128 on the 5090. And then memory bandwidth, lastly, we have 1000 on the 4090 and then we have 1500 on the RTX 5090. So really quickly, man, can you imagine pairing a 5090 with an Intel i9 14900KS running at 9.1 gigahertz? This is 9,117 megahertz. You imagine that. 
firstly, let's cover the emulation updates regarding Nintendo pretty much obliterating emulation for the majority of us, unfortunately. So what happened? Android, there was a PS2 emulator that was removed. For those of you that are unaware, I'm sure you're all aware of this at this point. Yuzu, the Nintendo Switch emulator, was sued for $2.4 million, which I find hilarious that there was a new emulator for the Nintendo Switch release called Suyu. That is literally what it's called, Suyu. <laughs> I just think that that's funny. That's me. I personally think that that's funny. However, there's, so the drastic, uh, the 3DS emulator that was removed from the place, or so it's still on the Play Store, but it's not free anymore, or it's free now, which I guess that's a benefit to all of us. And then the P there was a PS2 emulator that was removed, and there's a lot of emulators just pulling out after what happened with Yuzu, unfortunately. Uh, but really, that's really all I need to say. I don't think that emulation is going to be going anywhere, especially for those of us that are at least somewhat, sort of, kind of, a little bit tech savvy and actually understand how the internet operates. It's pretty simple to do. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it to you, okay? You're ready for this. You get some sort of internet security software, like Avast. I use Avast, okay? And then you also get this other program called Malwarebytes, which is like a tracks whatever viruses and malware on your computer and then what you what happens is you go to this thing called google and you google search this stuff called roms and emulators and then what happens when you search on google for these roms and emulators guess what happens it brings you to these roms and emulators mind-blowing right pretty easy to get them even though nintendo is going after all these companies it's not going to be difficult to get these things okay so if, if you're if you think that like all the emulators are going to be going away one all these little retro emulation consoles that i make videos on they're still being sold on amazon they're still being sold on ebay they're still being sold all over the place on the internet i honestly have no idea how those companies are getting away with it if anything those are the companies nintendo should be going after not yuzu the actual emulator I, I'm blown away Nintendo isn't going after the companies selling these little emulation devices full of Nintendo games for hundreds of dollars. That's what I'm blown away by. That I can see being a problem. And anyways, point in saying this, man, is it's just like emulators and emulation ain't going nowhere, boys and girls. Okay, so next we're going to cover the PS5 Pro, my friends. This is pretty cool. According to the presentation page, that was totally, I read that very wrong. Presentation page revealed by Moore's Law is Dead, the next generation PlayStation console should support a new version of super resolution technology. Now, for those of you that may not be too into the uh, PS5 Pro news right now, I have been following it for the past few days because there's been more and more leaks coming out on this. Ray tracing performance is going to be is going to get a really big performance upgrade from the normal ps5 so even though we may not see that much of an, an a difference between like 4k frame rates or 1440p frame rates which i i don't own a ps5 because whatever i just never got a ps5 after the whole fiasco there after whatever the pandemic took place i just never i i moved on to the pc stuff and the pc stuff has really elgato you're gonna freeze on me like that i'm gonna actually keep that in i don't understand why it's doing this it's like a memory it's like a bandwidth problem with the usb i don't know it's just like it's maybe not going enough power to record in 4k um now i totally lost my train of thought ps5 pro ray tracing cores are going to be enhanced 1440p and 4k frame rates are probably not going to change what's going to end up happening is in or, i was going to say nvidia Sony is probably going to like add more ray tracing cores into the actual graphics card on the PS5 Pro. However, let's go ahead and read this article or just kind of showcase this article. So the single precision compute FP32 is estimated at 33.5 teraflops at its peak and over three times as much as the current PS5, which is pretty cool. The GPU compute power suggests that the GPU clock should be expected at 2.8 or 2.18. 2.18 gigahertz or 2.40 
why am I having such a hard time? My, that my Elgato camera disabling is like it's on my mind right now, and I don't want it to happen again. The 2.4 gigahertz. 8-bit. This is based on previous claim that the PS5 Pro GPU has 60 out of 64 available compute units in the custom APU enabled. In a document titled Trini Trinity Technical Overview, there's whatever. So the upscaling from 1080p to 4K resolution would require 2 milliseconds of GPU cycle time, and that's the subject for further optimization. Such an upscaling library would require only 250 megabytes of, of memory, similar to AMD FSR and NVIDIA DLSS. Ugh. Oh my goodness, bro. DLSS, there's no requirement for per, per game training, which means that it can be supported by developers easily through the official software development kit. And there's your resolute. Sorry, an error occurred while loading the content. Sweet. So anyways, this is kind of like whatever uh, the Nvidia like remix stuff. So if we come down here, we see the specs of the PS5 Pro to the PS5 and then the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. So we have 8 cores, 16 threads, same as the normal PS5. The CPU is going to be going up to 4.4 gigahertz. The normal PS5 is only 3.5. We have RDNA 3 for the GPU on the PS5 Pro and RDNA 2 for the normal PS5. And then you guys can see all these other numbers here. I'm not going to read over all of this stuff. I'm sure you guys kind of get a picture of what we got going on here the gpu power is that's a massive upgrade from 10 to 33.5 so the ps5 pro is is going to be pretty good the the real question is are we actually going to have these in store where actual real humans can buy the ps5 pro or are we going to pull another sony and only list them online for people to whatever enable bots and buy them all if you know what i mean but uh what do you think is going to happen I, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty solid on my answer with that. We're talking about Sony here. They're gonna list them all online. There's, we're we're gonna we're gonna wait a full year before we bring them to Walmart, right? <laughs> so no, let me take that back. We're gonna wait three full years before we bring them to Walmart, just like the normal PS5. However, let's stop hating on Sony and go over to the 14900KS, the most outrageous, obnoxious overclock in the world's history of OP overclocks. 9.1 gigahertz that is insane dude but i mean there's no way that like e obviously this is like none of us are gonna ever get to this but that's just insane bro you know what i mean that's crazy that somebody was actually able to accomplish that and if you guys want to go and uh woo, please don't be loud all right cool so Elmore Labs, 3.92 or 3.9 thousand subscribers. So they definitely know what they're doing. That's crazy, bro. Because they managed to run it on Windows. Oh my goodness, what? I actually, I didn't notice that. Hold up. Well, I didn't, you didn't notice. Yeah. That's funny. Hello. So Asus Rogue Alley, the with Z1 Extreme drops to 599, making the MSI Claw an even tougher choice. For those of you that are unaware, the MSI Claw did end up releasing, and although it's not a terrible handheld and it's performing pretty well, the price is really what's unfortunate for this, and that's because it performs pretty much the same as the Asus Rogue Alley, and to be fair, most of the time the Asus Rogue Alley or however you want to pronounce it yes i'm fully aware i'm probably pronouncing this wrong asus rogue ally asus rogue alley asus rogue ali whatever dude whatever you want to freaking call it mr pronunciation warriors on the internet i don't care how it's pronounced you understand what i am talking about the asus handheld there you go are you do you feel better now <laughs> performs <laughs> performs better than the MSI Claw, but it's also 100 to $200 cheaper. So I would recommend that you get the AMD or the ASUS handheld over the MSI handheld because of that. But yeah, my friends, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I don't think emulation is going anywhere and I'm super excited for the 5090, dude. This is honestly, this is the first time that I'm actually going to be getting. So I've always gone with it with, with a, like I got a 2080, then I got a 3080, and then when I realized the 3090 was now not a Titan anymore, I got a 3090, 
and that surprised me and i was like wow this is like this is a huge jump from the the 3080 and then i got a 4080 and i saw all these other people talking about how they were like rendering out these 4k videos in like literally like 10 percent the time frame of a 4080 and boom i was just like what do you mean so it takes me 10 minutes to render out a 4k video but if i get a 4090 it's going to take like one minute there's that big of a difference between the two graphics cards yeah there is big difference so like these like 3d animation programs like blender cinema 4d you ever notice how like a 4080 if you have a, if you've ever tried this with a 4080 you kind of got away for the loading and you kind of got away for the programs to like read whatever it is you just barely created nope 4090 it's like real-time preview it's it's pretty crazy like the the difference between a 4080 and a 4090 so anyways the 5090 hands down without a single doubt in my mind will be the card that i get for the next generation of gpus i'm not going to wait for the 5080 to come out especially because the pc channel is doing so well you know what i mean i want to be able to get that and review it for you guys only the, the unfortunate thing is that i have to actually buy my graphics card so unfortunately i'm not going to have it a full week before it releases to the public <laughs> but uh yeah hope you guys enjoyed this i'll catch you guys in the next one peace